In my opinion, in any discussion about training plans and nutrition plans, uh, the conversation needs to start from a place of acknowledging the complexity of our biology. And from there, we can appreciate the fact that there are multiple components that build any single person, any single athlete. And so athletic performance is based on not just one or two major adaptations, but the coordinated increase of many adaptations. Um, an analogy is that you couldn't convert your frumpy commute car into a performance automobile by just sticking in a bigger engine. The rest of the car also needs to adapt to support that bigger engine, such as a larger exhaust pipe, for example. Similarly, an athlete and their athletic performance is based on their fuel stores, their carbohydrates, the glycogen stores, um, even as well as the accessible fat stores. The athlete is also dependent on having high oxidative capacity to support endurance activities. Oxidative capacity is probably the most important adaptation for endurance athletes. It is assessed through the VO2 max test and a lactate threshold test, and it gives the athlete information on how well their body is using oxygen to generate energy from carbohydrates and fats. The increase in oxidative capacity directly translates to an athlete's ability to sustain endurance events for long periods of time. So those are just some of the major adaptations, but with each of these adaptations, there are individual differences from one person to another, or within the same person from one time point in their life to another. And you could almost think of it as improving these adaptations up to uh, a plateau, perhaps. Eventually, highly endurance athletes will notice that their additional gains in performance um, become smaller and smaller as they reach their highest potential. And each of these adaptations may have its own plateau, so to speak. Now, what can affect where that plateau lies is perhaps largely genetic, um, definitely dependent on nutrition. Proper nutrition can allow an athlete to reach a higher plateau or improper nutrition may limit where that peak plateau is. Exercise training is a form of stress, so is quality of sleep can affect a person's ability to reach their plateau or where that plateau is, and other stresses in a person's life. And I think every athlete can also speak to a source of motivation for themselves, which we could understand is very unique from one individual to another. Um, what's your passion? What's your motivation? What's your inspiration for pushing yourself to these physical limits? At the end of the day, all of these data and this information that an athlete can collect on themselves, these are important tools for them to understand their biology and to push their physiological adaptations. Um, but really, what is it the motivation that drives you?